Retro controllers are kind of boring. Let's make one better while trying to keep it as cheap as possible. What's up everyone, my name's Corey, and in today's video we're going to be building this custom retro game controller. Now this idea actually came to me while I was toying around with ideas for my upcoming video where I'm going to be building a custom emulation console using a Raspberry Pi. But I actually ended up coming up with a different idea where I plan on stuffing the Raspberry Pi into an old retro console. But I don't want to let you know what console that is yet because I wouldn't want to spoil the video. Wait, what? Oh. Unfortunately for me, I already finished building this controller before coming up with that idea, so this isn't going to fit the aesthetic of what I want to build. That being said, if you like the way this controller turns out, then I have great news for you. Good news, everyone! For the first time ever on my channel, I'm going to be giving this controller away for absolutely free, so make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video where I'll be going over the details of the giveaway. But don't worry, even if you don't win the giveaway, you can still build this controller yourself because I'll be sharing the list of parts and the STL file so that you can print this controller yourself and build it at home. But with all that out of the way, I think it's time for us to jump straight into the build. As with most of my 3D printed projects, I usually start by coming up with a design in Fusion. I wanted this controller to be wood grain on the front and back, and I wanted it to be flush with the sides. But it would have been kind of difficult to print the controller face with a lip, so I came up with a pretty unique design which has the face and rear of the controller surrounded by a trim piece, which will basically hold the whole thing together, which was kind of inspired by how Apple designed the iPhone 4 and 5. I also wanted to make this project as accessible and cheap as possible. So rather than making a custom PCB, I decided to design what I could only describe as a button board that the switches will basically just snap into and be held in place by friction. After I was happy with the design, I printed out the button board so that I could start populating it with these tactile switches that I had laying around. Now, I know a lot of people don't like clicking buttons in their controllers, but for me, I prefer it. I don't know, I might be a little psycho. After inserting all of the switches, I needed to figure out a way to connect them all to a common ground. Otherwise, I would be running a signal and ground wire for each button, which would be an absolute mess. So I used this piece of single strand bare wire and soldered it to one of the posts on each switch, making sure to route it in a way that it won't interfere with the mounting holes. To achieve the wooden look I was going for, I went with some wood veneer that I picked up from my local Menards. I super glued a piece to each of the controller parts and very carefully cut it out using an X-Acto knife. After cutting out all of the buttons, I could finally stain the veneer using this honey stain which I also picked up at Menards. I then moved on to preparing the control board. This is just one of those cheap Amazon arcade controller boards that I had lying around for another project that I abandoned a while back. So I figured it would be perfect for this build. Well, almost perfect. All these connectors and the USB port would be way too tall to fit inside the enclosure. I do have some small Arduino boards that I could use instead, but I really wanted to use this board so that it could be more accessible for people who have no coding experience. So I decided to desolder each of the connectors one by one using my desoldering iron. I could have done it without this tool, but it would have taken so much longer, so I'm definitely glad I had it. Just in case you're interested in any of the tools used in this video or any of my other videos moving forward, I'll have an Amazon affiliate link for where you can buy them down in the description below. After removing all the connectors from the board, I could solder the USB cable to the board where the connector used to be. For this, I used used a USB cable that I had lying around from an old broken mouse, cut the connector off, and soldered it to the board. I then used hot glue to secure it to the board so that it can't get snagged, only to realize that I need to print the trim piece first so that I could run the cable through before soldering. Oops. While I'm shamefully fixing my mistake, I thought I'd take this time to show you this awesome soldering station that was sent to me by Anonstar. This is the AD249SM Plus, a really helpful tool that I could personally recommend to anyone who wants to up their soldering efficiency. With ample storage for small items, a convenient tool holder, and really sturdy helping hands with lights that are fully adjustable to ensure your work will stay still and well lit while soldering. Oh, and did I mention it has a microscope with up to 2000 times magnification? You can choose between the model shown here with the 10.1 inch display or the smaller 7 inch model. But regardless of which one you choose, they can both record high resolution video straight to a micro SD card, over USB, or even a capture card using the built in HDMI output. 
And while they did send this unit to me for free, everything I've said is based on my own experience with the product and therefore is my personal opinion. Some of the footage in this video wouldn't have even been possible or would have at least been a lot harder to record if not for this amazing tool. So if you think it's time for you to level up your setup, consider checking out the Andonstar AD249SM Plus using the Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Now that the USB cable is connected, I decided it was time to move on to soldering up all the buttons. But first, I needed to install the shoulder buttons. For this, I used an old trick I learned when I first got into 3D printing back in 2018. I took a piece of standard 1.75mm filament and cut it so that it can be used as a hinge. Now to start wiring up the face buttons. I quickly realized that I had forgotten to make holes in the button board for wire routing. So rather than wasting filament to print a new one, I just drilled a couple of holes in it. Don't worry, I've already updated the model so if you're building this yourself, you can skip this step. Once I was done soldering the wires to each of the buttons, I started soldering the other ends to the inputs on the control board. Finally, to finish assembling the controller, I used some of these screws that I salvaged from a bunch of old laptops. And with that, the build is complete. But don't click off this video just yet because I'm about to go over the details of the giveaway. If you wanna win this controller for free, all you have to do to enter is comment the word retro down below. And once this video reaches 5,000 views, I'll be choosing a completely random comment for the winner. You don't even have to be subscribed, but a like and a sub would be greatly appreciated because it helps me grow my channel so that I can keep making awesome videos like this. But with that, I think all that's left to do is play some video games. But that's all I have for this one. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and hit that bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Oh, and if you want to see how I renovated this 3D printer closet, be sure to hit the video on your screen right now. I may be a little biased here, but I think it's a great video that you'll really enjoy. But anyways, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.